Hey everybody, Lena here, and I wanna thank you for joining me for our weekly meditation. Now first, I do want to apologize to you because I've been, I've missed a couple of weeks, the last two weeks actually of our meditations, uh, but there's gonna be a few changes. Uh, my schedule has changed at work, and so that's what kind of threw me off, um, and I am working 12-hour shifts, so uh, yeah, that just kind of threw me off a little bit, but I'm back on track now. And actually, I think this change is going to be for the better. Now, um, instead of the meditations coming out on Tuesday, I'm actually going to have them out Sunday morning. You know, so I'm going to be recording them over the weekend, probably like on Saturday, and then editing it. And then I'll be uploading it uh, to our channel on Sunday. So you'll be able to get uh, the weekly meditation, you know, er first thing in the morning on Sunday mornings, And then you can just meditate on it throughout the rest of the week. And I think that that's probably uh, actually going to be a better schedule for everybody. And it's going to be more beneficial for everybody. So I'm really excited about that. And for all of you that have been out there watching the videos, the weekly meditations, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I do um, thank you for your comments. Uh, they mean the world to me. Um, that just, you know, is fueled to my fire and it just keeps me going, knowing that uh, I'm able to be a blessing, you know, to you guys um, and that we can just get in this word together because this is literally like our Bible study. You know, I'm just, you know, inviting you guys into what I do, <laughs> you know, pretty much when I'm in the word of God. And so we're just sharing these weekly meditations. We're meditating on this word together. And like I said, this is us together. So I welcome comments, you know, any comments you guys might have, any questions, um, anything, just anything you guys want to throw out there. You know, I'm here. Um, actually, we have a phone. I, we do have a phone number. And I'm going to be putting that on my video descriptions because I hadn't been. So, hey, if you guys want to call, we have a website. You can, um, if you, you can put, um, any kind of question or anything or any prayer requests in the comments here. But if it's something of a more personal nature, you can go to our website and you can actually, you know, send us an email, send us a message through our website. And it's a little more private that way. Or, hey, give us a call. If we don't answer the phone, uh, leave a message. And as soon as we get that message, we're going to listen to it and we'll give you a call right back. And, you know, we can agree together. Amen. You know, there's no time or distance in the spirit. Amen. You know, so um, even though I'm here in Texas and you may be in a whole nother state, it doesn't matter. There is no time or distance in the spirit. When two or more come together, when two, two or three come together and we agree on something according to the word of God in faith. Amen. I add my faith to yours. Me and Dale, we come together in agreement. We add our faith to yours. Amen. Watch out. Things are going to happen. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to be putting that contact information in the bottom of our videos. And, hey, just, just reach out to us, you know, um, whenever you feel like it, whenever you feel led. Amen. Okay, so on that note, now let's go ahead and jump into our weekly meditation. Now, our scriptures for this week are actually Matthew chapter 16, and it's going to be verses 13 through 18. And I'm reading this from the New King James Version. It says, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? The Son of Man, or excuse me, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Amen. Okay. So let's just jump right in. Now, some people have mistakenly, and you know, I have my trusty notes here, <laughs> so I'm reading from those. You know, some people have mistakenly interpreted this passage to say that Peter was the foundation on which Christ would build his church. However, that would violate many scriptures that state that Jesus is the chief cornerstone of the church. And now I'm actually using, uh, Andrew Womack's Life for Today uh, study Bible. Um, I really love that uh, study Bible. It's awesome. I encourage any of you guys, if you're, you know, 
serious about your Bible study, man, go to um, awmi.net and you can go on there and look for uh, Andrew's Life for Today Study Bible. Um, and I mean, it's just an awesome Bible study tool that I use all the time. But that's where I got the notes for uh, our weekly meditation today. Uh, and, um, but anyway, sorry about that. So let me just repeat that. So some people have mistakenly interpreted this passage to say that Peter was the foundation on which Christ would build his church. However, that would violate many scriptures that state that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. And I do remember when I was in church, people used to always say, Peter, that's the rock upon which Jesus has built the church. And, you know, they would say things like that. But scriptures, you have like 1 Corinthians 3, 10 and 11 uh, that talk about Jesus being the foundation Ephesians 2 20 through 22 and 1 Peter 2 4 through 9 and I'll put those scriptures in the description below so if you want to look those up as reference scriptures as well you'll have those there but again these scriptures are stating the fact that Jesus is the cornerstone Jesus himself is the rock upon which uh, the church is being built so that kind of um, you know so that just kind of clears up some of that maybe wrong teaching that we may have received uh, some have suggested that the foundation rock referred to was this confession that Peter made that Jesus was the Christ or the son of the living God. And now, and I can understand that because that would make sense uh, because Jesus said, um, you know, because um, Simon said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And although it is true that uh, people do have to confess Jesus as Lord to enter into God's kingdom in light of the Old Testament prophecies and New Testament references to Jesus being the chief cornerstone, this passage of scripture must be referring directly to Jesus as this rock upon which he would build his church. But now I do like that um, teaching also that some people say that just the fact that uh, Peter said, you are Jesus, you know, you're the Christ, you're the son of the living God. You know, that does make sense because we have to confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Again, like the notes here were saying, in order for us to be able to enter into God's kingdom, you know, but I would like to add just a little, um, you know, but also here, um, what I'm noticing is revelation. It, it's in a uh, Verse 17, Jesus answered him, being Peter, and he said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now, I believe that this is a crucial point as well. Yes, Jesus is our rock. He is the foundation upon which the church is built today. Amen. And so any religion that does not have Jesus at the center, that is not Jesus-centered, that's not all about Jesus, you know, that's all I'm going to say about that right there. But Jesus as Christians, let me just put it like this, as Christians, as Christians, Christians, Christ-like, we are um, like Christ. That's what Christians mean. It means that we are like Christ. We are from Christ. Like um, if I'm from Texas, so if somebody asks me, oh, you're a Texan, you know, why are you a Texan? Because you're from Texas. So we are Christians. So we are like Christ. We are from Christ. Amen. In him, we now live and move and have our very being. Amen. So yes, Jesus definitely is the rock. He is the foundation of our Christian faith upon which we build everything else in our lives. Amen. But now I do like this point, like I was saying, because I feel like this is um, teaching about revelation. I feel like this, the Holy Spirit is telling us that God is telling us here through the scripture that this is the key. This is how we are to live this Christian life today. As New Testament believers, see now in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of them. They had to receive word uh, from God through the prophets. Amen. God spoke to the prophets and then the prophets share what God has said to him with the people. But see, today, as born-again believers, as New Testament Christians, we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. Amen. So we don't have to uh, go to prophets to hear from God. We can hear from God ourselves. And we and how do we hear? How do we walk? We walk by faith. We walk by revelation. Amen. And I believe that this that that's what this scripture or this text here is um, 
um, bringing out as well, because Jesus said, blessed are you because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Amen. And we know that you have God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so now we have God living on the inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. So in order for us to live this Christian life successfully, we have to walk by revelation. We have to hear from God. We have to hear from the Holy Spirit. We are to be led by the Spirit. That's what differentiates us as New Testament believers from Old Testament believers. We are now led by the, well, that's one thing. We are led now by the Spirit of God. You know, the fact that all of our sins have been forgiven, that's a big one as well. But that's how we are to live our Christian life today. That's the point I'm wanting to make. We are to live by revelation. We are to live by what the Holy Spirit um, has revealed to us. And we are to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, um, yeah, just a couple of points to meditate on. Um, Jesus, he's our rock. Amen. And now as New Testament believers, uh, that's one thing that um, makes us New Testament believers. The fact that we have confessed Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And then also the fact that we are now uh, led by the Holy Spirit. Where Jesus was saying, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Amen. So now we walk by revelation. It's all about revelation. We have to have a revelation of who Jesus is. We have to have a revelation of who we now are in Christ. We have to have a revelation of God's love, a revelation of righteousness, the fact that we're now the righteousness of God. Man, we walk by revelation knowledge. We walk by uh, literally, we walk by being led by the Spirit. We live our lives now today by being led by the Spirit. And just quickly as I close, I believe that's one thing that um, differentiates us. You know, the Bible says uh, to be doers of the word, not just hearers, but to be doers. Amen. And I think that's what differentiates the doers from just the hearers. Doers are those who have had a revelation of God's word, a revelation of the word that they've heard. And now that they've had that revelation, amen, it goes from being head knowledge to being heart knowledge. And now it's easier for them to just move and to act on it because it's actually become a part of them. It has been revealed to them by by the Holy Spirit, amen, versus a person who just hears a message or hears a word or reads a scripture. I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds good, amen. But then they go on. They've had no revelation of that word that they've received. And so it still just remains head knowledge. And then the enemy, he's gonna come and just steal it away quickly. And it doesn't produce anything. No fruit is produced from it. But when you get some word, that's why these weekly meditations, I think, are so awesome. Because when we get this word, we just meditate on it all week. We mull it over. We think about it. We look up those reference scriptures and stuff like that. And we just keep this word in front of us. And as we do that, then that's going to allow the Holy Spirit to give us revelation on whatever scripture we're meditating on for that week. So then it goes from head knowledge to heart knowledge. It becomes part of us. And then now we're able to live from that and to act on that in our daily lives. Now, God, this, now guys, this um, weekly meditation, it was a little long, uh, but it was some things that I had to say to you guys. So the next ones, I'll keep them short because, you know, we usually like to keep them under 10 minutes, you know, so just a little grace with this one. But uh, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and close for today. And I just want to tell you, thank you so much for watching. Again, your support is so greatly appreciated. If you find value in this video or any videos on our channel, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, and as always, continued blessings.